On tonight's edition of The Best Times, we visit with some of the most popular stars from one of the longest running shows in television history. Join us for a conversation with the stars of The Lawrence Welk Show. Funding for the best times is provided by... Since 1988, the H.W. Durham Foundation has been focused on aging issues, providing grants to programs like the best times to enrich and improve the quality of life for our older citizens. The best times is the only monthly news magazine exclusively for the age 50 plus reader. Your copy is free at over 200 locations with important stories and news you don't want to miss. The best times is always the best. Trezevant, a life care community, a celebration of life. The responsible decision for your well-being now and in the long term. And being responsible has never been such a hoot. TrezevantManor.org Hello, I'm Chris Hardaway. Welcome to this edition of The Best Times, a series that looks at life after 50. When I was growing up, Saturday night television meant the Lawrence Welk Show. My parents and grandparents never failed to tune in for some champagne music. The Lawrence Welk Show was a staple on network TV and in syndication for 27 years, making it one of the longest running shows in television history. And that run hasn't stopped yet. You can still tune in your local PBS station on Saturday night and hear that same champagne music. In past years, the stars of the Lawrence Welk Show have played concerts at the Germantown Performing Arts Center, and I've had the chance to talk with them. Guy Hovis and Ralna English became one of the first husband and wife singing duos on the Lawrence Welk Show and one of the show's most popular acts. Let's meet Guy and Ralna. It's Sunday morning. Guy Hovis and Ralna English are rehearsing for their afternoon concert here at GPAC. Their voices blend together with the ease of nearly 40 years performing and recording together. It's a union, both as performers and as husband and wife, that started in a small nightclub in Santa Monica called The Horn. The Horn was the only reason that I ever was able to get anywhere because they literally, they nurtured me. I was able to watch performers get on stage and see what, how, what you do to, you know, to entertain an audience. And, uh, yeah, Steve Martin was, uh, was there when we were there. Jim Neighbors was discovered as Gomer Pyle. Yeah. When we were there, and who else? We met all kinds of people. Vicky oh. Lauren, and Vicky Carr started there. Jack Jones. Yeah. I mean, and when people would come in and work on their act, like uh, Carol Burnett and Jim Neighbors come in and work on their act there. Uh, like, River Rock would was, come in. Judy Garland. Uh, Judy Garland tried to take him to. Uh, Mexico. Oh, wait a minute! No, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> they met, fell in love, and got married. But they didn't start performing as a duo until 1969, when Ralna was hired on The Lawrence Welk Show. From Hollywood, it's The Lawrence Welk Show, bringing you... We were newlyweds at the time, and I was just... Uh, I went on a yeah. tour, a 17-day road tour, you right were, after I joined the show. And I you were touring with night. The Welk Show, and I was touring with David, so we didn't even see yeah, much of each other for a year. Other, yeah, but anyway, <coughs> so I, I said, you know what, we got to get him on this show. And we got to get you on this show, guy. And, and so we, I went around and asked everybody if we could do a song together on the Christmas show. No, we don't have only the children. We don't have husbands and, and wives. Mm -hmm. So I thought, hmm, I think I'll just walk right in there to Lawrence's himself. <laughs> and because I, I loved him and he, he really loved me. And, and I, I came down and I said, Lawrence, could we do a song for you? Uh, that I really would like to do on the Christmas show. Well, of course, my curl. Come in here, my poison curls. And 
it was history after that. You know, we got more fan mail than Lawrence himself. He was adorable to me, and I loved him very much. And uh, and he, we really got along well. We only had one little rift the whole time I was there. For the most part, he he was great to me. What I tell people is, as long as you understood that it was Lawrence Welk's television show, you had no problem. But if once you started thinking it might be partly yours and you should be have a little say so in what was on the show, yeah. you might have a little problem. But he loved Ron. I mean, anytime we ever wanted to do something on the show, it was like she said, to send her in to see Lawrence. And yeah. <laughs> but he just was totally dedicated to entertaining people. And, and all those years about working those one-nighters and playing all over the Midwest and I mean, he learned what people liked. So once he got to television, even though he had to, had a few discussions with some of the producers who thought they might know better than him, he always said, you know, I'm going to say what's on my show because I know what the people like. And he did. And he loved what he did. I mean, you could see when he got in front of that yeah. band, he just he like a light came on. Yeah. You know? I always say he wasn't in it for the money. He wasn't in it for the fame. He yeah. was in this business because he loved it, and that's the key. That's the key to any job, I think. You know, if you love it, you're going to do well. And uh, he did very well. He's still going on. He's been gone since 1992. And um, he's, he, we're the longest running weekly show on television. Yeah, now, Lars, he only paid Union Scale. To everybody that was on that show, that was just a rule. I mean, it, it, anyhow, that's just the way it was, and we were kind of, kind of like, you know, like a big family. We all made the same amount of money, but so, to to really make any money, I mean, we we could. I don't even know if we could have lived on what they was paying us on that television no, show. We, we had to go out on weekends then. and do a, a perform, you know, public appearances. So, uh, gosh, we we usually wind up. Uh, working on that TV show on Thursday afternoon, we'd take a, a all-night flight somewhere. We'd work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and come back Sunday night to go in Monday to work on the TV show. Mm -hmm. Well, Monday at one o'clock. Yeah, after about <laughs> two after about two years of that, doing that, I know we must have looked really tired on one of Lawrence's three-week one-nighters. We'd go on. Uh, three of those a year. Anyhow, he came up and sat down by us on the airplane mm -hmm. and said, you look a little tired. <laughs> and Ronald said, yeah, well, you know, we're having to go out and work on the weekend. You don't pay and, us enough, Lawrence, and we yeah. have to go out and make some money to live on. But, no. but here's what he said. He said, you should work less and charge more. <laughs> oh, from the and that's what he and, then, and that's what we did. I mean, we told the manager, and he said, yeah. "Oh, you'll never get that much money for a show," and we did. Yeah. And and so we worked less and we charged more. Yes. <laughs> that I've always said, "Thank you, Lawrence." <laughs> it's showtime at GPAC. Ralna and Guy take the stage before a sold-out crowd of Lawrence Welk fans. Their performance seems effortless as they sing a repertoire of songs ranging from old standards to gospel, rock and roll to country. Their voices are every bit as strong and clear as those days in the early 70s when they captured the hearts of fans across the country with the magic of their duets. We were the only husband and wife team he ever had on his show. And they just thought we were America's sweethearts. They loved the way we'd look at each yeah. other when we'd sing. And, we were newlyweds. I mean, I was and, madly in love with this guy. You know, it took me a long time. So I, <laughs> I've always been really thankful that the, the show had gone off the air when we when we got divorced <laughs> because it was hard enough for these for the fans who who knew it, found out about it to take. Yeah. But if we'd have still been uh, doing you know, like weekly shows, I don't know what what. Uh, what would have happened there? We'd have, and, we well, might have had to hire security. And we didn't work together for a period of time, so we tried really hard to be civil to one another, nice to one another for all those many, many, many years. And now we're just like family. You know, I feel like Guy and Sis, his his new wife, 
she, she calls me her wife-in-law, and uh, I just, I, we just have a great time together. We just love singing together. Guy and I know we were meant to be as far as singing together. We just, we know the magic we have. Uh, we've discussed it, and, and we don't understand it, but and Lord, it's there. We're, we're just grateful our voices still work at well, this age. The concert reaches its climax. Guy and Ralna close with a set of patriotic songs. Though their marriage didn't last, their music keeps them together. And to their fans, they will forever be united as Guy and Ralna, from the stars of Lawrence Welk. At this stage of our life, and with the people who come see us, it's this, they're like family. They're like people who watched us on TV for yeah. 30, nine years now and I mean it's like yeah. that's a whole nother level of self of satisfaction that we have that we're that we have uh, brought some happiness to these people for all these years and are still able to do it. Yeah. We did Milestones and Memories it was a PBS special the biggest special we ever did 47 original cast members got together and we did this great show in Branson Missouri it took us eight days to do this mm. this thing, put it together. And so <laughs> we were rehearsing a lot, and Guy and I went to, to breakfast after one of the rehearsals, and I said, you know, Guy, God put us together for a reason. And it's obviously wasn't to be husband and wife, because we haven't done very good <laughs> at that. But we have something together. And, you know, I, I just think, I know that we do. I know that it's special, it's beyond us, it's beyond him, it's beyond me, and it's beyond us. So whatever it is, whatever that intangible thing is, uh, it's a gift. The Lennon sisters literally grew up on television. Their 13-year run on The Lawrence Welk Show began in 1955, and today their careers have spanned over 50 years. In that time, they've performed as both a quartet and a trio. I caught up with them before their concert at GPAC in 2010. Let's meet Kathy and Janet, two of the original group, and their younger sister, Mimi. Together, they are still America's sweethearts of song. sang from the time we were babies. We came from a very musical family. Our dad and his brothers had a musical group called the Lennon Brothers and they would rehearse at our home and we would sit at their feet and listen and then they'd go home and we'd sing all their harmonies too. So we always always sang and we sang uh, at our church and uh, we sang in a musical at our church and someone from the Rotary Club heard us and had us come sing at his luncheon for, gave us five dollars and then the Elks Club gave us ten dollars and we were just like getting rich by doing these little <laughs> service clubs. The story of how the Lennon sisters went from dates at the local Lions Club to national TV appearances on the Lawrence Welk Show is the stuff of Hollywood legend. Older sister Diane, age 15, went to high school with Lawrence Welk's son, Larry Jr. He asked her out on a date and subsequently found out about their singing talents. So he went straight to his dad to tell them about the great singing act he discovered. And that's when the Lennon sisters got the phone call that changed their lives. And he said, my dad's homesick with a cold and I've been <laughs> bugging you so much about him, about hearing mm -hmm. you. Um, would you come over and sing right now? So we got together, we went over to Mr. Welk's, Daddy took us over, and we were little kids. We were 9, 12, 14, and 15. 
and he said he came out in his smoking jacket it was a maroon satin smoking jacket and these velvet slippers and he <laughs> sat down and he said okay girls now my son has said so much about you please will you sing so we hit the piano and we sang this spiritual he that was popular by the McGuire sisters and we sang he and he just said uh, would you be on my Christmas show and that was 1955 and we were on for 13 years after that every, every Saturday. Saturday night that, that was it and on this holy night I would like to have you good people meet some of my good neighbors the Lennon sisters I've had the pleasure of hearing them sing out at my house and I like them so much I decided to share the, this wonderful singing with you this evening. We have Diane, 16, Peggy, 14, Hello. and Kathy, 12, Hello. and Janet, 9. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lennon sisters. He can turn the tide and calm the angry sea. You started so young. I mean, here you were on national TV, you were on the cover of fan magazines, oh. you had uh, paper dolls and all sorts of merchandise with your face and your name on it. What was it like to be child stars like that? We were just so grounded. We were in such a wonderful, happy home, and our home life was everything. And then on Sat Fridays and Saturdays, we would go down to the ABC studios where the crew was our family, the orchestra was our family, and we never really felt like we were in some sort of Hollywood atmosphere. We were always in a place where we felt safe and grounded. And so I, I think we were unlike a lot of the child stars. We just were very, very normal. Okay, what was Lawrence Welk like? As a mentor, he was just a, he was a wonderful boss in that we learned very young how to be professionals. We had to be on time. We had to know our lyrics. I mean, there were no cue cards. We had to make our mark. Everything was live. Um, and he was very strict that way, which was just a wonderful uh, place for us to be at that time because we grew up knowing how to very work all these other shows. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and Mimi, what did you think of Mr. Welk as a little girl? You well, I remember going down to the uh, studio, and one night, the very first time I sang with my sisters, we sang Do Re Mi, and right before we were to go out, I got really. I thought, oh, I'm going to get sick. So Dee Dee ran me into Mr. Welk's bathroom. And I remember going in, and it was flocked wallpaper and a beautiful robe, like they were saying, hanging. And I just thought, this is the richest thing I've ever known. <laughs> My eyes were like this big. But I was, I was in awe of him. You were he like four years old. Four. Four. Yeah, I was four. They're here. They're here. Who's here? The Lennon sisters. Right after their rehearsal with Lawrence Welk's orchestra this morning, they hopped on the Dry Gulch Express. And Mouseketeers. Here they are. Hi to you and hi to what, me. What do you think was the magic that people saw in you? Because you clicked. I think one, television was very early. Nobody had the remote control to turn to 700 channels. You watched the Lawrence Welk Show on Saturday and Ed Sullivan on Sunday and you did, you know, Lucy on Monday and Milton Berle on Tuesday or whatever and people watched us. We came into the living room. We, none of us were little beauties. We weren't Shirley Temples. We were like the kids down the street that came in, sang harmony, had our hair in our ponytails, you know, and I think people could identify with us, watched us grow up every single week for 13 years. Because we were really children. young. I mean, I was nine, nine, and then I was 23 when, when I yeah, left so the show. She was married and so had a already baby, had children, you know? and, every, so, and they watched us, and they would send us birthday gifts, and wedding gifts, and anniversary gifts, and baby booties for our new babies. Mm -hmm. And people just felt like we were their yeah. family. And I think, too, you know, I was way down the line. And um, we used to watch every Saturday night from home. We couldn't wait. And it was kind of funny, because people have often asked me, you know, what was it like growing up with the Lennon sisters as your big sisters? And they were just my sisters. You know, they changed diapers, they washed dishes, they folded clothes, but it was just the job they went to on Saturdays was they did the show and then they would come back home and they'd just go back to me and my sisters again. Um, and then they, we were on every once in a while you'd have us little guys come on. And so we would, I would be the little girl or my brothers would be the little boys and then we were always on the Christmas show. Every Christmas show. And that, show. Was, that was fun. And none of us really had this great drive 
to be in show business or to be on television, we uh, we still say it, it never. Our career never really defined us as human beings. We're just you know very normal, average people. But it kept happening for us, and it, it continues to happen. So uh, it's when it's we been, when we left the Lawrence Welk show, we ended up having our why we left the Lawrence Welk show is we were offered our own television show for ABC. We were on that with uh, Jimmy Durante, and then we went on to do the Andy Williams show for a couple of years, and then went on to Vegas, and we it just kept going. And then finally, it's a funny thing because uh, what happened was we decided after we wrote our autobiography, we got our star on the Walk of Fame, we continued to do Christmas specials and you know all the different variety shows that were on. We were blessed to be guest stars on all of these, all Ed Sullivan, etc. But then we decided, okay, maybe we're through, you know, and then we got that call from Larry Welk Jr. again, full circle, and said, won't you come to Branson? And we said, what's a Branson? And he said, well, you've got to see this place. I'm opening a theater, and we'd love you to star in the show and ha have a show with all the celebrities. And uh, we asked Andy Williams, we asked the Osmond brothers, and at the time of John Davidson, and they all said, you belong here. It is such a great theater. And we decided to go for maybe a couple of years, and that was in 1994. And this is this will be our 17th season. Can you point to one highlight in your career? Is there a highlight that stands out? Well, I'll, I'll start uh, meeting John Kennedy a couple of times <laughs> and singing for him, and 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 uh, sitting on stage with him when he was stumping to become president, and. Uh, that was really a thrill we've meeting him, and we've sung for seven presidents. Seven presidents, so, so that's been, uh, um, wow, you know what, there's been so many beautiful highlights. I think that when you come to being a celebrity, the, the Hollywood star on the Walk of Fame was kind of special. That was really, that was lovely, but... Um, Wow, I, you yeah, know that's so many. Really? Stevie Wonder was a highlight for, for oh, me. Oh yeah, that you, was just really that was one something. night when you took over yeah, for Peg. Yeah, I was I, I always filled in, and uh, yeah, <laughs> Peg couldn't be there, and it was at American Music Awards the very first year they had them, and uh, my brother Pat went as my date, and afterwards we were at the after party, and Stevie Wonder was just sitting all by himself in a corner somewhere, and we walked up and. The energy that came out of him, and he sat and <laughs> held our hands and talked to us, was just something I will never ever forget. It was <laughs> wonderful. You've been in show business for so long. I mean, mm -hmm. it's incredible your I career. Am uh, incredible. What keeps you going? <laughs> Bills. <laughs> it's no. <laughs> it's like it's I don't know. It's us. fate. <laughs> I, every time we say, yeah, you know. Well, that's it. Maybe we're gonna, and then we get a call. And it's like, can't you just do one more? Or wouldn't you think of? Or could you? And it's like, well, maybe. So I don't know. We love I, working I, in like, Branson. And we I, love those 40 shows that we do. And there's <laughs> also something very magic about being on stage together as sisters. You know, I mean, I I watched them for years on stage, and then when I began to work with them on stage, there's just, it's it's a uh, like a pride. Of, of look at this wonderful thing that we do together as sisters because we're three very individual people but when we're on stage it's like we're one we mm -hmm. we, we don't even worry about the other one like is that harmony gonna be okay she didn't see weed is that gonna be all right you just and if it doesn't it's fine we all we just work it's as one so and we it, get it's, such um, warmth and love from our audience mm -hmm. It's just, it never ends. Yeah. They're just there for us. Mm -hmm. The support and loyalty of all these years, our fan club, our, it's just, it's just phenomenal. And yeah. I think that's part of it too, is what we get back. So, you know, who knows what the Lord has in plans mm -hmm. for us. We, we never know. People say, when are you going to retire? It's like, well, when somebody says, get yeah, the hook, get the hook, <laughs> get the hook when it's ready, please. <laughs> The Lennon Sisters are among the longest running acts in show business history, and today three of their grandchildren join them on stage. They're the Little Lennon Sisters, and who knows, maybe their future is on stage too. Our interview was over, but before the sisters left, they gave me a belated Christmas present in three-part harmony. We'll give you a little sneak preview of our Christmas show, a little <laughs> teaser. How's that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Probably. Oh, what song? Oh, song. <laughs> ready? Let's just do it. Okay. Wait so, a minute. It's too low. Okay. Okay. So have. <clears throat> okay. Okay. What is it? Oh. Oh. No. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So have yourself 
a merry little Christmas now. Merry Christmas to you. There you go. <laughs> little surprise. Want more information about life after 50? Go to our website, wkno.org slash best times. And while you're online, click over to Next Avenue, PBS's website where grown-ups keep growing. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hardaway. Good night. Funding for the best times is provided by Trezevant, a life care community, a celebration of life. The responsible decision for your well-being now and in the long term. And being responsible has never been such a hoot. TrezevantManor.org The Best Times is the only monthly news magazine exclusively for the age 50 plus reader. Your copy is free at over 200 locations with important stories and news you don't want to miss. The Best Times is always the best. Since 1988, the H.W. Durham Foundation has been focused on aging issues, providing grants to programs like The Best Times to enrich and improve the quality of life for our older citizens.